Welcome back, everyone. Next up, we have Region Biopharma, Inc. It trades on the OTC pink sheets under the symbol RGBP and RGBPP and is a publicly traded biotechnology company focused on the immunology and immunotherapy space, rapidly advancing novel technologies through preclinical and phase one and two clinical trials and small molecule therapies for treating cancer and autoimmune disorders. Please welcome the chairman and CEO, David Coase, and Harry Lander, the Senior Scientific Consultant. Welcome back, gentlemen. Well, thank you for having us and Happy New Year. Glad thank to you, be Happy here. New Year to you. All right. So uh, jumping in here, uh, you know, we noted that we're going to be discussing what our goals are for the new year as we've moved into 2023. I think uh, we've covered a lot of the key milestones we've achieved last year already. Uh, this, uh, this time we want to turn around and focus on what we hope to achieve in uh, the year 2023. So with that, we'll jump into uh, questions. Let's see. Did we lose Anna there. You guys want to jump right in? Okay. Yeah, let's, let's go jump for right it. In. Sorry, I thought you are going to talk a little bit longer. I'm here. Okay, okay let's jump right in. So uh, talk a little bit about what your goals are for 2023 as we begin this new year. Okay, so the, the company right now is uh, focused on several things. Uh, one, we're very much uh, interested in moving our uh, intellectual property forward and developing that as quickly as possible. Uh, within that scheme of uh, intellectual property, uh, we are interested in really prioritizing the things that we think are the most important, not that other parts aren't important, but uh, there are certain, certain aspects of our intellectual property that we think are key uh, components to other things that we're moving forward with. Uh, we also want to identify relationships that we feel are going to aid the, com uh, the company both near term and longer term as we're moving forward. And then a key one that seems to be on everybody's lips is uh, what's going on with the convertible debt and how do you get rid of it? So our goal there is really to, uh, we've eliminated a great deal of debt. I don't recall the number off the top of my head, but I think it's somewhere around three and a half million dollars. We still have a little bit of debt left to go, and our goal is in the first half of the year to, uh, to get rid of that. So those are the things that we want to start out with on our goals. Uh, we'll kind of dive into some other aspects of it, and, and uh, we'll go on from there. Great. Can you talk a little bit about what your plans are for new intellectual property to be developed in 2023? Harry, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, for new intellectual property. Uh, thanks for having me. So, I mean, when, when you file patents, um, you have to balance several factors, of course, when you make a decision to file a patent. Um, they're not free, right? So you have to pay to file it. You have to pay when it gets published, you have to pay if it gets issued, it, the, the government makes plenty of money on, on, on the patent office. So, so, it's a, so there's a cost to it. And then um, you have to balance that, of course, with the potential value of the intellectual property, right? So uh, just because you have some new unpatented information and potentially, you know, that doesn't mean you need to patent it. And of course, we want to keep the focus of the company, um, you know, sort of keep the company focused. So you know, we, we currently have, I think, a very strong portfolio. As I've mentioned, we have composition of matter patents for um, shRNA, for the small molecule inhibitors and activators of NR2F6. Um, we have the mRNA vaccine. So we have really solid composition of matter patents. And we have some methods patents. So I think our current portfolio is very strong. But to answer your question, um, going forward, we want to probably focus on, we'll probably be generating more data around um, shRNA sequences uh, targeting NR2F6. 
we are partnering with, as we mentioned, a big CRO, and uh, we'll be generating uh, IP that way. And those were probably very worthwhile uh, patenting. And we'll likely also have other CAR T-cell designs. So we'll likely uh, file another one or two potentially uh, CAR T-cell specific patents. Um, but f again, we want to keep it focused on, on what the company feels is, is really the most uh, exciting and, and valuable uh, intellectual property and, and balance the cost. Of it. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, do you plan on seeking to uplist Regen's stock to a more senior exchange? You know, it's funny because, uh, I don't know, over the last year, year and a half, I've had a lot of shareholders ask me if we're going to be uplisting. Uh, it seems to be something they would like to see. That seems to be something I would like to see. Uh, the, the issue on the table for uplisting is each exchange that you want to look at has their own requirements as to what that takes uh, to be eligible. Now, these are gonna consider uh, uh, the price of your stock. Um, it's going to consider the uh, assets on the balance sheet, the market cap of the company. And uh, we need to hit some key milestones uh, before we entertain uplisting. But the goal really is to uplift the company. I think that does several things. It gives you more credibility with your shareholders and potential investors. And it also uh, allows the company to uh, achieve financing on more favorable terms, uh, the higher up the food chain you go. Wonderful. And you also mentioned your CAR T cell drug and Duracar in recent presentations. So what are your next steps in its development? Um, David, may I take this one? Uh, sure. Why don't you take that one? Yeah. So, so um, right. So we, I did mention, we did mention the Duracar in, uh, in recent presentations. Uh, we're working with a very large CRO to develop this drug. Um, so there's really three main steps that we are um, going to be looking for in the first half of this year. I can outline them if you like. Um, so currently, we're, we're, they are working on synthesizing the chimeric antigen receptor that we designed. Um, they will then be expressing that in T cells and then testing those uh, T cells to see if they are expressing the CD19, which is one of the, the target, and whether they're expressing the shRNA to inhibit NR2F6 and whether NR2F6 is actually inhibited. So that's phase one. Uh, once that's done, and there's, we don't see any reasons why that won't work, um, they will begin studies on in vitro. So testing these CAR T cells now in vitro uh, to see how they behave. Do they kill better than, as well as, or worse than existing CAR T cells? Um, so we, we should have those data all as phase two. Uh, very important data. And then we can put them into an in vivo model and a mouse model of, of cancer and test again similar questions, whether these CAR T cells are better, worse, the same as existing CAR T cells. Um, each of these phases take about 10 weeks, plus or minus, and we expect this first phase to finish at the end of uh, February. So we think we'll have the, the second phase completed uh, by the end of May and the animal experiments by the end of August. That's, that's sort of the time frame we're looking at. Great, thank you for that. Uh, talk a little bit about your plans for raising money to allow Region to expand its research and get into clinical phase one. Yeah, so I, I think everybody's seen that we've come through all this uh, toxic convertible debt uh, over the last year, many years. And the goal moving forward is to try and find uh, ways to raise money that would be uh, uh, less deleterious to our shareholders. Uh, I'm not unsensitive to that or insensitive to that. I would like to see us find uh, potential partnership arrangements where we may uh, co-develop a particular uh, uh, set of IP and the partner in that would somehow uh, be involved with providing some capital. We provide the direction, and then there would be some sort of economic arrangement between us. The, uh, uh, the, other, the other possibility 
is that we're going to look at, at near term, uh, potentially uh, high net worth investors that would participate potentially in some sort of a private offering. I think uh, uh, as we get further into this research and things mature, uh, we'll see uh, more favorable terms available to us to do larger financing without having all the dilutive effects of where we are at this particular time. So the goal really is to push the science as far and as fast as we can so that we can attract, I think, uh, eventually some large pharma or larger biotech companies that have an interest in the space that we're operating in. Great. Thank you for that, David. Uh, so I also understand that Region has several INDs that have been approved. Can you describe them and tell us if you plan on going into clinical trials with them? Um, again, I, I think I can answer that one if that's okay. Um, we don't, uh, Region doesn't have several INDs approved. We have one IND approved, that was for um, heme accelerate for our aplastic anemia, but we do have two INDs that um, have been submitted to the FDA. They responded with, with some questions, so we need to resubmit those to the FDA uh, upon completion of some additional experiments. Uh, those are for uh, D cell vax and T cell vax. Um, if you recall, D cell vax is a dendritic cell therapy in which we take a patient's dendritic cells out of the body, modify them with our patented um, IDO inhibitor, indolamine dioxygenase inhibitor for uh, shRNA, and then um, putting them back in the body. By inhibiting IDO, you can, these, these dendritic cells become very active and they recognize tumors that, and antigens that normally they, they, they wouldn't. So it's a very nice uh, approach. And, um, and then the T cell vax, uh, that other IND, uh, we inhibit NR2F6. We take the T cells out of the body, we inhibit NR2F6 and put those back uh, as well. So, uh, but, but those two INDs still need a bit of work before we can uh, resubmit them. Great, thank you for that. Uh, do you plan on expanding your management team? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, as we grow, we need to bring some components of the management team back in, in house. Uh, I think the goal really is to have a full-time chief financial, chief uh, scientific officer and a, a, a chief financial officer. Because as you're getting bigger and bigger, things get more complex. Um, and it, it's very important that the company is able, I think, to have somebody in the role of the chief scientific officer that's day-to-day -day working with our uh, uh, contract research organizations. The same is true of the chief financial officer as we're moving towards uh, wanting to uplist the company. We're going to have to have somebody in place that is able and willing to be involved with the day-to-day that -day keep us current with whatever exchange we decide that we want to, uh, to move to. Um, we'd also like to expand the company's board because we feel like, uh, uh, one, if you want to uplist the company, you're going to have to have outside board members. And two, you want to have outside board, me board members that have uh, uh, skill sets that will assist the company uh, flourishing at a new level in where it trades. And what are your plans to eliminate convertible debt? Well, the convertible debt really is, uh, we're gonna have to continue to uh, uh, structure something where we can uh, either pay off the notes with stock or uh, bring in high net worth investors that provide money for the company to pay off the notes in cash. Those are really the two avenues that we have available to us. And um, when can we expect Q1 financial statements? Well, we're actually, what is this, our, uh, our first, uh, yeah, no, this is the, uh, 
first quarter. That's due out, uh, I believe, around the first part of March. Okay, great. Well, we do have lots more questions for you all, but we are out of time. So what we're going to do is send them to you so you can answer our viewers directly. And please come back again with some of your updates. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you very much. Enjoy. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, stay with us. We'll be right back, everyone.